Live from the heart of New York City, it's the morning show with Mike and Juliet. Thursday. Welcome back to the morning show. More than half of American women are single, leaving a lot of ladies out there looking for love and wondering why they can't find it. Our next guest falls into that category and wants to know what she's doing wrong when it comes to finding Mr. Right. I have not met the right guy for me quite yet. Kara has a common complaint about her love life. One of the biggest issues has been timing. I meet people at the wrong stages in their life. I've met some great guys that I'm interested in and they're just, they're just not ready yet. Kara Simon is single in New York City. So naturally, the 31-year-old wonders, why is it so hard to find a fella who isn't frightened of a relationship? Well, I might meet a great guy. I think things are wonderful, um, you know, and you think you're on cloud nine one day and the next day you just don't hear from them for a couple days and sometimes you're just stumped and it turns out they don't want a relationship, they don't want anything. The ad sales exec has tried all the traditional routes for meeting men, including the internet, but the resulting dates frequently fell flat. I've been on dates where I'd show up and a guy automatically says, I gotta go. I've been shocked. If I go on a date, I don't really have a plan in mind. You know, obviously I, I meet the guy and hope it goes well. And if it goes well, great. And Kara's luck isn't really any better on nights out with her girlfriends. It is so frustrating. My friends who are married or engaged get hit on and guys are buying them drinks all the time. You know, I've even tried to buy guys drinks just to like get their attention and they think I'm out of my mind. <laughs> Now, her dating drought has lasted so long, she's reached an unhappy anniversary. I think it's probably been around five years since somebody asked me for my number. What? She's so beautiful, too. Welcome to Kara. And also today, welcome the author of You Lost an Ad. Hello, Jess McCarran. I'll talk to Jess in a second. But Kara, so what do you think? Like, if you had to, if you had to sit there and pick one main reason. Oh, see, so you got a cat call out there. <laughs> yeah. If you had to pick one reason, one main reason why you're single, what would it be? I think timing. Timing. I think it. timing's everything. I think living in a big city sometimes can be very difficult because you, know, you got the power players and the movers and shakers and everything. And I've heard a guy, a very, very nice guy here say, there's just so many prospects. Why settle down? Maybe that's the problem. So give me an example of a guy that you dated that kind of had a commitment issue. I think the perfect example is somebody who I met last year and I was head over heels in love. I thought it was, I thought I was done. I thought that was it. And I think the big wake up calls, I was actually the maid of honor at a friend's wedding. And as I was walking down the aisle, I, I saw him, got up to the aisle, he was gone. Apparently he actually got physically ill and had to leave the synagogue. Well, was he, did he have food poisoning? Um, well, when was I finally Ill? saw him, actually my whole family was there. So they actually were like, uh, I think he got sick. And I was like, uh oh. And he's like, yeah. Finally, 20 minutes later I saw him, he's like, yeah, babe, I think I had peaches and I was like sweetie you don't eat peaches and that was kind of the wake up call to realize he was not ready for a commitment. You thought he was like freaking out because he saw a wedding going he on? He saw me walking down the aisle by myself and I tried making eye contact and smiling and he just. He sounds like a wimp anyway. Yeah. Good you know. that he ditched him. <laughs> Jess why did you write this book? Um, well actually Kara you'll be happy to know that I was like you. I had a disastrous dating career um, and then when I was about 23 I started my own sales company and as I got really engrossed in sales I realized that if I just applied sales techniques to m dating I would actually be successful uh, because there's really no difference in dating and sales. It's both learning how to approach someone, how to build a rapport and how to get a commitment. Well Kara says men don't commit and that's the problem. Well, um, I have to say, if you're hearing that from a lot of guys, it's um, actually something that you're doing that's getting that response. What do you mean? Well, I mean, obviously, they all didn't get together and decide to tell Kara <laughs> we're not that we're not ready for a commitment. Um, she's doing something. It's not, it's not who she is. It's how she's dating. And one of the biggest problems uh, that I see is uh, something that's called cutting to the close. Um, it's very common for salespeople to get really um, anxious for the sale, and they'll jump ahead of themselves and try to close the customer. It sounds like that's what you're doing with men. You're trying to close them too soon. I get a little too excited. You get a little too excited. I, when I like someone. When I meet someone, I, I like, I get it. <laughs> That's kind of normal, but you're just saying kind of tone it down. You also talk about prospecting. That's a tactic used in sales. And how, how, does, how does that apply to Kara? 
Well, you know, there there have been a lot of books out there like the rules that teach you not to look a guy in the eye, not to smile <laughs> at him, don't ever talk to him. And if I took that approach as a salesperson, I wouldn't have any customers. Uh, you absolutely have to prospect. You have to get out there and you have to make moves. Um, and I know that we uh, we saw some video of you out last she's night. She's out prospecting um, here. <laughs> right. Well, no, but she's not, though, because she's sitting there at a table with a bunch of girls staring at each other. They're like, oh, everybody's back is to everybody else in the, uh, the bar. You're right. Right. That's not prospecting. That's a night out with the girls. And a lot of women think they put themselves in situations where the, oh, we're going to go to a bar tonight. But then they sit at a yeah. table with five women and just talk to each other. That might, That's not prospecting. My girlfriends, we, we all do that. We all do that. And guys say they don't want to come up to us because they feel like we're this gaggle of girls. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have some more tips about how to land a guy. Construction in the city going on. I guess it's beautiful if you like that kind of thing. Welcome back to the morning show. What if we told you the secret to finding Mr. Right is to start thinking less like a customer and more like a salesperson? It sounds good to me. Back with us is dating coach and author Jess McCann. She says that's what you have to do. And also here is a beautiful single girl, Kara Simon, who is looking for love in New York City. Um, filling your funnel. That is a sales technique, and it sounds a little sexy, but how does this apply to the dating world? Uh, well, it's not sexy. <laughs> Basically, filling your funnel means that as a salesperson, I'm always selling at least five or six customers at the same time. It would make no sense for me to meet somebody and keep going back to them every day trying to sell just one person. Um, and women tend to do that, though. They meet a guy, and right off the bat, they cut off all their op other options because they want to see where this goes. But That's a they, bad idea? It's a bad idea. They really need to fill their funnel with three or four guys because they're not all going to work out and you don't want to have that starting back over feeling. Can you imagine doing that Kara? Going out with like five different guys at once? No. <laughs> because you know eventually you're gonna kiss one of them and then you might kiss another one then you're gonna be like the kissing bandit running around New York City. Well I think kissing is totally allowed. <laughs> All right how about this? This is something I think is key. You say stop the date at the height of impulse. What do you mean by that? Height, height of, of impulse is a term, a sales term. Yes, height of impulse means when I'm with a customer and I see that the customer is the most interested and the most excited, I have to shut up, stop talking, and close the sale. And when you're on a date, you also have to sense when your date is the most interested. When they seem the most excited about you, that's when you actually have to go home. But a lot of women, and I don't know if you do this, Kara, they are having a good time and they stay too long. Well, then, but then you can let them get to know you, right, Kara? You that's what stay. It, yeah. What's, they, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, you know, um, after dinner, the guy, um, you know, is probably really excited about you, might want to kiss you, but, uh, you know, really, that's when you should leave. I know you might not want to, but you don't want dinner to turn into late night drinks and then a slumber party back at your place. And, well, the girl you know. just has to be responsible for her behavior. Yes. And sometimes when you have drinks, you're not totally <laughs> responsible for your behavior. Can you see yourself, you know, leaving at the height of impulse? I could try. You have to do I this. could try. <laughs> One more thing, the C approach. That's an acronym. What does that mean? Yeah. The C approach um, stands for smile eye contact, energy. I used to teach how to cold call, and I would tell all my um, salespeople, when you walk into a someone, uh, someone's office that you don't know, smile, maintain good eye contact, and exude a good energy. You can use that when you're out at parties and bars and all these social settings. Well, let's take a look. Last night, you were out on the town at a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Did you exhibit all these things? You're walking down. Okay, now, there you go. You're walking. You're not really smiling that much. You look maybe a little t men, <laughs> men out there, does she look like she's ready to meet a guy? That's a no. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a man in the belt. A couple guys are checking you out. Of course, there is a camera there following you around. <laughs> Do you think when you walk through bars, that you know, places uh, like restaurants and things like that, that you're open? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> How did she look to you? Uh, that's not the C factor. Uh, you looked well. You you weren't smiling. And I know that it sometimes feels uncomfortable to walk around with a smile, but you have to. And you're not looking anyone at the eye. I know guys were noticing you because you're a very attractive girl. So don't be afraid to make that eye contact with them. And you have to exude a really good positive energy. Kara, we're going to follow your story and we're finding you a guy. Whether you like it or not, sister. Thank you so much. And the book, by the way, You Lost My Hello, is available wherever books are sold. Thanks, guys, for joining us today. Good tip.